What's up, boys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be doing NBA imperialism in 2K23, but with the entire world and every current player in 2K will be playing for their country or state they were born in. How this works is every qualifying team will start off with their actual borders. Then we'll go to a wheel of names, which will randomly pick an attacking team. Every country or state on their border will be added to another wheel to decide who they will be attacking. If it lands on a territory with no team, they will gain that territory automatically. But if they face a territory with a team, the attacking team will have to face that team on the defending team's home court. The winning team will take over the losing team's territory and add a player of my choosing from the losing team. We'll repeat this process until we have one surviving team that controls the entire map. Injuries and fouling out will be turned off and the computers will control both teams for every game. The United States are way too OP at this to have one national team to begin with, so they'll be representing their individual states. Some countries in Europe had to be merged together to form a complete team, which surely won't piss off anyone over there. And the continents of South America, Asia, and Australia could each only form one team. California as usual is a clear favorite to win this coming into it and even their B team might be a top 10 favorite so I'm gonna send their B team of Drew Holiday, Clay Thompson, DeRozan, Evan Mobley, and Brooke Lopez to a random unoccupied country to spice things up a bit and god damn it Joe Biden stay out of my videos we're sending them to Ukraine along with 500 billion dollars in taxpayer money my fellow Americans might not notice anything wrong with this map but I ended up taking out every island nation because it just makes the game too complicated this isn't anything new for New Zealand but Indonesia and all those other other countries caught a few nukes. And speaking of nukes, all of Asia now belongs to Japan, including Turkey because they needed Sangoon. Also, when a country like Australia holds a territory that isn't touching another, they'll just be doing a D-Day invasion on their closest countries. And Europe will have a chance to attack North America if they can claim Iceland and Greenland first. First up on the attack is Slovenia. I already gave them Austria and Croatia to form a team, so they have eight countries on their border, but they'll be going to Greece. Whichever way this goes, a super team is already being formed in Europe. Greece only had Giannis and the NASA, so I took players from Italy and North Macedonia, but I can't not give Giannis his own team. Coming into the second half, Giannis had 16 of Greece's 18 points. His team looked pretty clueless on offense, but giving Giannis a ball in the perimeter with a big man on him is like giving an American a shotgun in the trenches. Minute and a half left in regulation, and Luca is apparently drop step dunking for the lead. Giannis had a chance to take the lead back at the free throw line, but he went one for two, and Vlatko camp card turned into prime Bob Pettit. Greece then turned it over trying to find Giannis, and Luca followed it up with a Lee Fuck You three to put Slovenia up five and secure the victory on the road 46 to 38. It's a no-brainer here. I'm moving Giannis to Slovenia. Slovenia also adds a couple countries to their territory, but they have several unoccupied countries on their border, which will thankfully nerf them. One down, 45 to go. And we're going to the United States. Illinois is up on the attack. They're landlocked, so there's no peaceful way out of this, but they'll be taking on Iowa, which is as good as a white flag. I grew up in Iowa City, and I was excited to find out that we could actually form a team at first, but during the actual recording process, Process, I realized my mistake of mixing up this Greg Brown for this Greg Brown. So I just added Chris Murray because there's no way they're winning this anyway. But fuck around and find out Iowa took the lead late in the fourth quarter off a of Joe Wieskamp corner three. I was hot at this point. 80s calling for an ISO on one of the Murray sperms, but the ref calls a shooting foul with 0.4 seconds left. AD hits both free throws, Iowa's out of timeouts, and Illinois wins. But joke's on them. The best player from Iowa is 79 overall Harrison Barnes, and they almost got cooked by AJ Green, who only has a generic face scan in this game. We're staying in the US again. Florida will be taking on Georgia. Both teams are pretty good to begin with. They had a super even game that went into overtime. The best Jazz big man of all time, Walker Kessler, was putting Georgia on his back to open up the extra minutes. Jalen Brown brought it within one, then got a huge steal, which led to an Anthony Edwards dunk and the lead. Georgia got another stop and found the Hall of Famer for a contact dunk to put them up three, and Florida turned it over on the inbound, which won the game for Georgia in overtime, 67-61. to They'll be taking Scotty Barnes from Florida and probably doing the rest of the world a favor by stopping Florida before they can do any further damage. We're going international again, but this time to Cameroon, who owns all of Africa, including Joel Embiid and Pascal Siakam. For now, their possible invasions will be Japan and Spain. They'll be attacking Spain, which I'm sure can count as payback considering the whole continent of Africa used to get passed around like my ex-girlfriends. There weren't many team design options for Cameroon. I considered BLM. We've got Visit Rwanda, but the design is awful and that's on the opposite side of Africa. I also found some really inappropriate designs when searching African keywords, as you might imagine, including warlords, fast food chains, and BBWs. So I think I found a nice medium for them with Wakanda Forever jerseys. Cameroon is all size and no ball handlers, which could be an issue. We had a riveting first quarter that ended 3-2, but Cameroon took care of business by the end, beating Spain 36-19. Joel Embiid had a game high of 20 
38 and 17, and I'll be adding Ricky Rubio to Cameroon squad for some much needed ball handling. You are freaking African Americans plus Mark. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Which I'm rocking with Mark because Mark is rocking with us. Next up is Canada. They'll be taking North Dakota, which would give them a couple of nukes. Latvia is up for the first time and don't even worry about what's going on here. They have Chris Stops and that's all that matters. They'll be adding Belarus. And Washington, D.C. I just gave them West Virginia to make things easier. They have a ton of options on their border and they're attacking Ohio. What a bad idea. Not only are they currently handing out free cancer in Ohio, but they also have Curry and LeBron. Not even a biracial movie star duo can save them this time. They lost 29 to 43 and KD is being handed over to Ohio. Afterwards, Oklahoma added Colorado, who surprisingly couldn't form a team, and Indiana is taking on Kentucky. The Indians have a pretty solid team, but Kentucky has one of the best centers in the game, Luke Cornett. Somehow KFC's star player D'Angelo Russell was cold in crunch time, missed both free throws, and still managed to beat the Indians. It is an American pastime of ours, but no one is being given sketchy blankets or forced to move halfway across the country today. Instead, the dynamic duo of Darius Garland and Luke Cornette will be reunited. Next, we get the Bahamas, which is a surprisingly good team. Their actual country is so small, I just gave them most of Central America, but I wanted to give them options to begin with, so I separated South and Central America with Panama being unoccupied, and sure enough, they take it. Next is Washington State, who just wants Idaho. North Carolina is up, who is starting off as one of the best teams on the globe. Sadly, they're taking on Virginia, who I was really hoping would do some damage in this, considering they have a titty on their flag. They know how to party, but they don't know how to play basketball. Basketball. They were embarrassed on their home court and lost 7-55. to I'll be adding 83 overall, Keldon Johnson. He did have an impressive performance for Virginia with a team high of 3 points and 1 block. Massachusetts is up, who is always nerfed in these types of videos considering they're isolated besides being near New York. They added Vermont. Texas is up, which is frightening. They'll be playing Oklahoma, who doesn't have a single player that would benefit them. They won 48-26. to The home of the back-to-back -back MVP is up. Serbia will be invading Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bosnia would be bad as an American team, but Serbia took care of them on the road, 47 to 32. I'll be taking Bohan Bodanovic to join Bogdan Bodanovic in the backcourt. Arizona is up, who has been in a tough position from the start, being in between California and Texas. They'll be making matters worse and taking New Mexico. Serbia is up once again, and Europe might be coming to a conclusion soon if they don't win this one. They'll be taking on Slovenia. And Slovenia took care of business once again, beating Serbia 41 to 26, which gives them 397 overall players. Japan is up, but two too bad for them. This isn't going to be a naval battle. They're taking on Latvia. Surprisingly, there weren't any good Japanese team designs, but I have to say I love this one. Very realistic and simple. It also does a good job at representing the rest of Asia like those Indians with the acne. Latvia was using Lari Markkinen as a point guard, but it didn't matter. They beat Japan 36 to 22, being led by Kristaps 16 points and four blocks. They'll be adding another goofy big man with Sengun, and Latvia is going to kindly take over all of Asia. Back to the US and Minnesota will be facing Wisconsin. Minnesota doesn't have much going for them on paper, and they lost to Wisconsin by 14. Chet had a decent double-double and will be joining Wisconsin's front court. Kansas is up, who should do anything but take on Texas. Sure enough, they're playing Texas. Once again, Texas is better at every single position and won again, 47 to 17. California is up for the first time, and they'll be taking on Oregon, who isn't bad thanks to a few NBA fathers. But California is going to California. They scored twice as much as Oregon on the road and will be getting even better by adding DeMontis Sabonis. Alabama will be up for their first battle. They're taking on Tennessee. No matter how I make these videos, I've never been able to make a good Tennessee team, but Alabama is just as ass as them. Yet on the road, Alabama controlled the game the whole way and won by nine. A more or less retired DeMarcus Cousins dropped 18 points on them, and I'll be forced to add the star player from Tennessee to this Alabama team. Of course, that's Cameron Payne. Pennsylvania is up next, and they'll be taking on Maryland. Both teams are pretty decent and evenly matched up, but Pennsylvania has the advantage coming into this one. Neither team has an actual center, so things were getting ugly in the paint, but Maryland somehow pulled off the upset 41 to 35. Jeff Green was the highest scorer of this game, so that should paint you an image of what this game looked like. Maryland will be taking Mikal Bridges from Pennsylvania, and his best buddy Cam Johnson will be sent to a POW camp. Massachusetts is up again, but they're going to get some action here by taking on New York. Massachusetts is pretty mid, but more surprising to me, New York isn't that good. They're the number one reason this style of a video wouldn't work with all-time players. They would have Jordan
Frank, Kareem, and Melo, just to name a few. Now they're rightfully so in Jets uniforms. And to be honest, the shot selection in this game looked like football players were playing basketball. It wasn't pretty, and you could sense the CTE and touch of the tism on the court. But the New York Jets won 34 to 25. New York really can't improve much from this game, considering the best players from the pool at Massachusetts are Pat Connaughton and Bruce Brown. But geographically, they have a safe route with the surrounding New England states now being added to their border. Australia is up for the first time. Their possible targets are going to be Latvia and Asia, Cameroon and Africa, and even though this is a stretch, Argentina and South America. And bold move by the Aussies, they'll be facing Cameroon. I'm not that autistic myself. I'm aware Kyrie was born in Australia, and I know Steven Adams is from New Zealand, but would you rather have Aquaman as your center or Timid Boy? Let me know. I thought Cameroon was way too stacked at this point for Australia, but it was a really close game, and I'm loving the colors here. I don't mean the Cameroon team by that. I mean the team design. Australia went up six in the fourth quarter from what must be a glitch in the game, but Joel Embiid decided to put Africa on his back. Steven Adams missed some free throws, and Australia wanted to triple team Joel, so he found Okoji for an open three that brought the game within one. Australia missed another free throw, so Cameroon was down two, and Joel muscled his way inside for an and one and took the lead with 20 seconds remaining. 2K really wanted to screw over Australia in this. I don't know what this play is. Kyrie just gets nervous, but he passes it to Giddy, who hits the three at the buzzer and conquers Africa single-handedly. Australia will be taking Joel Embiid, who has given them problems, and since they already have Spain, Europe is once again up for grabs, assuming they can contain Luka, Giannis, and Jokic. Washington is up again, and they'll peacefully be taking Nevada, but they're surrounding California, so we'll see how that works out for them. New Jersey is up for the first time, who is surrounded by upgraded teams, and they'll be taking on New York. The thing about New Jersey is they don't have much going for them from the two and three positions, so for better or worse, they're starting off with three centers, and for now, that works out for them. They took out New York 48-40. to Najee Marshall was able to hold Donovan Mitchell to 10 points in this one, but he'll be taking his spot in their next appearance. Missouri is up for the first time, and they'll be adding Nebraska. Ohio is up for the first time since adding KD, and they'll be giving Canada their first opportunity. And trust me, you do not want to lose the war to Canada. They're probably against the whole idea of keeping an enemy player on their team. They'd rather make the survivors play hot potato with a live grenade than keep anyone prisoner. Thankfully, Ohio is the right team to take them out. They're tied or better at every position, and adding adding SGA to their roster might secure North America for them. The post defense in this game was almost non-existent, so I think it made this game a toss-up. Why Ohio is sending a double team to RJ Barrett, I don't know, but Andrew Wiggins knocks down the corner three to put Canada up two with 30 seconds left. Ohio still has 98 LeBron with Olenek on him, so this shouldn't be a problem. A teardrop. Well, they still have Curry, who is the best shooter in the game. The run. What the fuck, Ohio? What was that? They lost 43 to 50. Canada was led by RJ Barrett with 13 8 and 5, and the only shot that Wiggins made all game was the corner 3 that ended up giving them the win. Durant had 26, but Canada needs a center, so I'm taking LeBron. The rest of the Ohio squad is probably going to be handcuffed and tossed into the middle of Lake Erie. So now, not only does Canada own the location of the nukes in North Dakota, they're also right on the doorstep of the White House. Australia is up once again, who has several neighbors they could really use a win against, but they take Portugal. South Carolina is up for the first time. They're sandwiched between North Carolina and Georgia, who have both already expanded and improved and they'll be facing North Carolina. South Carolina is not a bad team to begin with, but I think they made a move too late. North Carolina gets another blowout victory, 52 to 24, and even though John Morant just shot zero for nine, he'll be the new shooting guard for North Carolina. Wisconsin is up again, who already added Chet, and they're facing Canada. Wisconsin was looking out of it. They were down nine in the fourth quarter, but they have three guards who can light it up. They got it within two points, but Tyler Hero decided he was him. This was his moment. He somehow created some space, but the go-ahead three was no good. And Tyler Tyrese went under the ball screen and SGA hit the three, which ended Wisconsin's comeback. Canada wins again, 60 to 54. LeBron was playing like his life was on the line, probably because it was. He had 29, seven and five. Canada has already been winning with a small ball lineup. So I'll be taking Tyrese Halliburton from Wisconsin to replace RJ Barrett at the small forward. Canada has enough blood on their hands already, but they want more. They're up again. They'll be taking South Dakota, which is an odd flex, but I think that means more nukes for them. And they can reconstruct Mount Rushmore to the faces of Drake, Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds, Vanoss Gaming, and why not put Kawhi Leonard up there too? Switzerland is up and they're most likely going to be donating someone to Slovenia. And I have some explaining to do about Switzerland. They've created some solid NBA talent, but not enough to form a five-man team. So I just combined them with the UK. They seem like good pals. And somehow there were no Switzerland jerseys and barely any UK jerseys. So this is as good as it's going to get. Switzerland put up a good fight, but they lost to Slovenia 34 to 48. I'll be adding OG and Unobi to Slovenia and turning in Ennis Freedom to Turkey for whatever we can get. Argentina is up for the first time. They actually have four players in the game and I only had to take one Brazilian, but 
their center is going to be six foot six Gabriel deck. So this is most likely going to be a charity game for whoever they play. I wish it would have been the Bahamas, but it landed on Australia. I'm surprised they got in double digits, but they still lost by 24 points. It could definitely make things interesting though, because Australia can now sneak into America. And this also connects all the continents together. Kentucky's up again. They'll be facing Michigan on the road, who is a really solid team across the board. Meanwhile, Kentucky shouldn't even be here at this point, but there's something about Darius Garland and Luke Cornette teaming up in 2K that has worked time and time again for me in these simulations. They took good care of Michigan on the road, beating them by 12, but the player Kentucky will be taking is Devin Booker, who shot three for 20, possibly the worst star player performance so far, but you can thank Luke Cornette for that. He had four blocks and taking care of things on offense was Darius Garland with a game high of 15. Slovenia continues to dominate the random wheel. They're up once again, but they'll be adding Bulgaria. Arizona is up, who wisely takes Utah without a fight, and we get a heavyweight battle between Georgia at North Carolina. Not one player on either starting five is under 80 overall, but North Carolina could use some height in this game because Zion will be matched up with the Hall of Famer sex symbol Walker Kessler. But I don't know what's up with North Carolina. They're allergic to competitive games. They won by 17 at home, led by Jaws 19. Who needs to rebound anyway when you can't miss a shot? I'll be adding another 90 overall player to North Carolina with Jalen Brown starting at power forward, replacing Keldon Johnson. Australia is up again, and they'll be taking on France, who really only has Rudy Gobert. Yet Rudy was French kissing their bums on offense and defense. It was a low scoring game, but they were up seven on Australia in the fourth. Giddy found Kyrie for a corner three that brought the game within four. They got a stop and Joel made the putback, which brought the game within two. Then Australia forgot to play defense. No one contested the Diang three and it's good, which puts France back up five. I've noticed that Joel's coding in late game situation equals either a fadeaway three or he'll just bully ball his way into the paint, but it works out for now. It's time for Rudy to answer back and put the moves on Steven Adams, but he just uh, froze up in the paint and it led to a stop for Australia, which gives him plenty of time to come back. And I love this late game play Australia has been drawing up. Kyrie panics and Giddy bails him out with a game tying three pointer with eight seconds remaining. Fournier chucks up a three, which sums up France's offense and they're heading to overtime. But Fournier opens up overtime with a three pointer. Never Google his last name, by the way, trust me. And Rudy Gobert gets a mismatch down low, which gives them five straight points and the upset against Australia, who in my eyes was one of the favorites to win this. And now I have to give Joel and B to France, who has little to no hope still. We're down to the top 20 teams and Arizona is up again. They're running out of options here, but they take the safe route and invade Washington. Still, it didn't matter for them. Arizona lost 18 to 39 and now Washington is big ballsing it, sitting between California, Texas, Canada, and the Bahamas. The wheel lands on Ukraine for the first time, but they'll just be adding Hungary for now, but that also connects them with Slovenia. Alabama will be adding Mississippi, which gives them a solid landmass to show off their flag that is definitely not based on the Confederate flag. Missouri is up again, who still hasn't played a game yet. They still won't. They're adding Wyoming and they just continue to look like the shit stain of the US. Texas is up again and they're surrounded, but not scared. They'll be giving the Bahamas their first game. The Bahamas were giving them some problems. Texas was up three with a shot clock off, but put some respect on Al Horford's name. He's not afraid to shoot on the court or off the court. The man's packing. It's no secret. He ties the game up and sends it to overtime. With a minute left in OT, Chris Duarte hits an open three that puts the Bahamas up three, but Trey Young answers back with a leaning three off the screen. Jimmy Butler gets a steal and gets to the free throw line to put Texas up two, but Buddy Heald answers back with a huge three of his own to put the Bahamas back on top with 19 seconds to go. Texas runs the only play 2K's computer is capable of in this situation. They're running out of time, but Trey Young gets the game winner off just in time. It bounces around and it's good. Texas wins the game at the buzzer. They still can't improve much off this victory, but the Bahamas and the surrounding nations really put up a good fight in this one. Buddy Heald had 20 points. DeAndre Ayton dominated inside with 10 and 15. I'll be adding him to Texas's squad because he was giving Miles Turner some problems down low. It didn't come easy, but Texas is now the first US team to conquer outside of the country. They control Central America and add France and California to their border. New Jersey hasn't been up for a while, but they'll just be taking Connecticut for now. Kentucky is up again and they'll be taking on an easy Alabama team. All they have to gain from this is 78 overall Herbert the pervert. But with two minutes left, Marcus Cousins put Alabama up six. Devin Booker answers back with a three pointer. And on the other end, this is what Luke Cornette does. He gets a big time block, which leads to another Devin Booker three that ties the game up with a minute 14 on the clock. The pervert is driving right. Get that shit out of here. Epstein didn't kill himself. Devin Booker hits a third consecutive three pointer to put Kentucky up three. Alabama then couldn't even inbound the ball out of their timeouts and Kentucky wins once again, 49 to 43. Not only is Kentucky somehow still alive, but they are now dividing the country in half because they have been so dominant. For the first time up on the wheel, we've got Louisiana. They'll be facing Arkansas, which is a fair matchup on paper. They 
they were going back and forth taking turns dunking on each other but then the baddest white boy in the nation came in and hit a tough shot which gave Arkansas the momentum they needed to pull off the upset against Louisiana the Aaron Fox had a game high of 23 points and will become the star player for Arkansas from here on out California is up for the second time they'll be facing Washington who's only upgrade so far as adding Marvin Bagley at center it wasn't too ugly but that didn't work out for them they lost 42 to 52 and even though this Washington team is relatively stacked California doesn't need anybody from Washington to improve their roster Missouri is up again who keeps getting chosen on the wheel but refusing to play games but their odds of that keep getting worse so have to play Illinois this time the big man situation for Missouri isn't looking too good so they could really use AD but also Illinois could really use a forward like Jason Tatum and what in the world is this Illinois State Gym I would love an explanation in the comments if anyone knows how this happened because I have downloaded a ton of team designs but never seen this type of arena anyway I don't know what's going on but even though I live in Missouri I wish Illinois would have won this so I could keep seeing more of this gym it feels illegal to be looking at this place Missouri is one for one in their matchups and they'll be adding AD from Illinois Slovenia is up again this wheel has a chubby for them I swear to god they'll be invading Germany which seems a little backwards but at the same time that's really good for my CPM and even better Slovenia blitzkrieg Germany and won 62 to 20 26. They'll be taking Franz Wagner from Germany, which now gives them 280 overall players and 390 overall players. We're staying in Eastern Europe. Ukraine is up and they'll be adding Slovakia. Texas is up again. They have some solid US opponents, but honestly, their best route is challenging France. Instead, they take on Arkansas, who actually has a player that would improve the roster since Arkansas already took Fox from Louisiana. And Texas wins again, 51 to 34. They'll take Fox at the shooting guard and expand into the South once again. Canada is up next. They make a pretty strategic move and take New Hampshire, which is going to box in New Jersey and put them on the chopping block. I don't know what's gotten into Canada lately. Someone might need to check on them in real life. They're up again and they want it all. They'll be taking on California, which will put them on the fast track for an international takeover if they win this one. This was a super high scoring competitive game the whole way, but with a minute left, the King of Canada hit the and one, which put them up eight. It took California 10 seconds of game time to find Kawhi for a three pointer. 15 seconds later, they got a stop and somehow found Damian Lillard for a 360 alley oop to bring the game within three. All Canada Canada has to do is slow down and play decent defense and they should walk out of here with the win but nope they double team dame on the block and pg-13 hits an open three to tie the game up at 60. both teams have an opportunity to win the game in regulation since canada is so trigger happy all of a sudden but they both miss and they are heading to overtime in overtime california finds pg-13 once again wide open for a three and this is just unlucky they tip the pass but somehow california recovers and sabonis hits the and one inside to put canada up to canada has lost all interest on defense at this point point they're self imploding it was just one open shot after another and California puts an end to the Canadian super team 75 to 69 Paul George had 31 Sabonis had a double double and LeBron was still playing for his life out there he had an imperialism high of 46 points on 19 for 32 shooting but he'll be a free man once again he'll be joining California Missouri is up next and they're taking on Kentucky who has been pulling upsets left and right but not this time they have been out rednecked to Missouri won 47 to 37 and they'll be adding Devin Booker North Carolina is up who has a history of curb stopping civilizations they're facing maryland who wasn't that much of a challenge for them north carolina won by 14. north carolina desperately needs size and defense so i'll be taking mccall bridges and moving chris paul to the bench and john morant to the point guard we're down to five states in the united states and also four countries on the international map france is up for the first time since taking joel Embiid, and they'll be facing the team of centers in latvia sangoon was running the point guard for this game but it didn't matter i still can't comprehend how france beat australia in the first place latvia won 44 to 35 and why not add another center to this squad Joel Embiid could be their point guard he could be their center I don't know Ukraine is up again and once again they're not doing much because of their surrounding countries they're adding Czechia although Latvia is about to do the work for them they'll be facing Ukraine on the road and even though Latvia has conquered Asia Australia Africa and South America Ukraine came in for their first game and beat them 37 to 30 being led by DeMar DeRozan 16 points and once again Joel Embiid is going to be passed off to the next country New Jersey is up again but they make the business decision of taking Rhode Island. Ukraine is up again and they add Romania. And New Jersey is up another time, but they have no safe way out. They have to face North Carolina, which isn't the worst thing for them. Even though North Carolina has been defecating on their opponents, I haven't managed to find them any size and New Jersey is all about length. It was a close game, but New Jersey gave them a ton of problems inside and North Carolina's post offense consisted of throwing lobs to Zion and hoping he out jumps everyone. And one more Donovan Mitchell three put this North Carolina team away 41 to 31. No one had a standout performance in this one but I'll be replacing Jalen Brunson with John Morant for New Jersey next up is Ukraine who adds Norway Missouri then adds Montana Missouri is up again for a second time in a row and has to face California LeBron gives California
California a late lead in the fast break. Missouri has an open three in all the time in the world, but Bradley Beal misses. AD rises up for the board and is awkward enough inside that he gets rewarded with a shooting foul. Missouri's offense keeps making the worst decisions possible and getting rewarded for it. Devin Booker puts them up too. Kawhi then pulls a Joel Embiid and shoots a fadeaway three with a mismatch and an empty side of the court. Michael Porter goes one for two with the line, so California still has a chance to tie. They misses the first one. They get another shot, but that also misses. And Missouri pulls off the major upset, beating California 50 to 45. Once again, I'm taking LeBron and passing him along. Missouri now owns the vast majority of the United States and all of Canada. All these Northern Islands now look like shit stains, but a win is a win. We're down to the final five teams remaining with Missouri, Texas, New Jersey, Ukraine, and Slovenia. New Jersey is up and only has one more cop out remaining with Delaware and they use it. Slovenia is up, but there's so many countries on their border, it's hard for them to find a game. They're adding Netherlands. Texas, on the other hand, has to have a game and they'll be taking on Missouri, who has slowly been turning into a super team. Missouri blew out Texas is at home 46 to 22 and will be adding Jimmy Butler which gives every player on Missouri an overall of 90 or higher and all that's stopping Missouri from owning the United States is New Jersey I forgot that Missouri also now owns Mexico so Missouri would probably go ahead and legalize meth and every opioid to get their economy up and running Slovenia is up twice in a row they add Denmark and Montenegro afterwards New Jersey's up and they don't have a choice they have to take on the great empire of Missouri Missouri has the clear advantage at every position besides the point guard we don't actually have a true point guard, so Devin Booker may or may not remember how to pass today. In the third quarter, I realized that John Morant and Donovan Mitchell were too quick for Missouri's defense to catch up with them on the pick and roll. And Anthony Davis was showing the defensive prowess of one of the actors in Woody Harrelson's new movie, which might be giving him too much credit. As a Missourian myself, I'm going to have to side with the Canadians on this one. Let's get some handcuffs and ankle weights and make a trip to a deep river. This was an unbelievable performance by AD. New Jersey now completely controls North America after beating the all 90 overall Missouri team 52 to 40. Booker had one of those nights he's been hit or miss throughout this. He went two for 17. New Jersey's up again on the wheel. They're creeping over to Europe. They're taking Greenland and back to back. They're up again, but this time they'll be making a stop in Ukraine. This probably would have been an unfair blowout if Missouri had won the last game, but now this looks like a pretty even matchup. Joel gave Ukraine a three point lead off an and one in the fourth. New Jersey responded with whatever you want to call this. Spida didn't want to pass it, but Jaw hit the open three for the tie. Something's going on with Donovan and Mitchell. He really did not want to pass it either in the fourth quarter, but it worked out for the most part. Drew Holiday ended up scoring twice in a row and the game was back to a tie at 49. Donovan Mitchell double teamed seven footer in his face. It's good. Exact same situation. It's off the side of the backboard. Dwell Embiid gets the ball near the basket and ties it up at 51 with 20 seconds left. Is Donovan Mitchell going to pass this? Was RJ Barrett's Twitter hacked on February 20th, 2023? Hell no. He gets to the free throw line and makes both. Out of the timeout, I'm thinking this team has some shooters. They'll go for the win, but some Somehow this ball finds Joel who goes for the tie, but he misses. And New Jersey, aka Team USA, wins 53 to 51. Since there's only two remaining teams left that have been dominating, I'm just going to go ahead and say that the team that is up next on the wheel will be sending their nukes, aka they will be the away team. And it will be New Jersey on the attack at Slovenia for the final game. At this point, both teams only have one original player each. Representing New Jersey is Bam Adebayo. And obviously representing Slovenia and the sole purpose that they're here in the first place, Daddy Doncic. I set the final game to 10 minute quarters instead of five and USA took a one point lead going into the half. Near the end of the third quarter, Slovenia was up 10. USA was looking to make a comeback. They hit a three and how lovely. This game is going to end with the update message on the screen. Yay, 2K. Giannis was a handful for this USA team all game, but they managed to take the lead back in the fourth off a spite of three. Jokic and Doncic both hit some tough post shots to put Slovenia back up four points midway through the fourth quarter. But we have this one little thing going for us in the United States. It's the abundance of melanin. Also, Joel still wants to be a 300 pound shooting guard, but it's been working out in this one. Is this Jokic? Shaq? I'm not sure which one I'm looking at here. Down three, Luka hits the step back three to tie the game up at 77 with three minutes left. We get some god awful ball movement in the low post here, but they send the double team from the far corner with no rotations ready, and LeBron hits the go ahead corner three. USA was hitting their stride here. Ja got an easy dunk. Then on the other end, they triple team Giannis and then quadruple team Jokic and get the stop. Giannis responds with the euro with 30 seconds left they put spider on the free throw line who goes one for two and find og for his first shot all night and it's a two-point game ja then switches roles with luca for a moment he goes one for two from the free throw line and on the inbound luca catches it and immediately tomahawks it to make it a one-point game ja goes two for two from the line and slovenia needs a three bogder misses a contested three but Giannis mosses lebron and whips it back out to og who misses a wide open three 
Giannis gets it again and finds an open Luka who shouldn't have dribbled. He also misses. They finally box out Giannis. New Jersey wins. Ja just sniped the fan in the stands with that ball. Joel was the MVP who they just picked up from Ukraine on the way over here. Giannis had a great game with 42 points and 21 rebounds. Luka had a quiet 18 on 5 for 17 shooting. And Jokic also had a solid double-double. New Jersey, on the other hand, had a more balanced attack on offense. Everyone finished in double digits, being led by Joel's 27 and 18. But it's all New Jersey. Once again, this video ends with one of the worst possible hosts owning the entire map. Thank you guys for watching. This might be my last imperialism video I record for a while or forever. I'm not sure. This is Dean World's idea anyway. Go check him out on YouTube if you haven't already. He's the one that came up with this idea for sports gaming as far as I know. I should be getting back to work on putting a big series together based on the Ultimate Fighter, so be on the lookout for that. Make sure you guys correct me on everything I did wrong or said incorrectly. But thank you guys so much for the support on these types of videos. These are much longer than I prefer my content to be. But you guys seem to really enjoy them. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Much love and I will see you in the next one.